Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the Fountain of Life television program today. My name is Larry Acuff. I'm the preacher for the Lithia Springs Church of Christ, and we want you to know that it is a joy for us to be able to study the Bible with you in this method. So we encourage you, get a piece of paper, a pencil, a pen, a notebook, get your Bible. Uh, we're going to be talking about life and death in our lesson today. So uh, hopefully that as we study these scriptures, uh, that they'll be a source of encouragement, of strength, and motivation to you. I want to remind you, this program is entitled The Fountain of Life. In Revelation 22 and verse number 17, the Bible says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. In Revelation 21 verse number 6, the Bible tells us, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Ladies and gentlemen, we want you to see the Bible as the fountain of life. In John 4 and verse number 14, the Bible said, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So, the fountain of life, as we look at these passages of Scripture, it is designed to help all of us go to heaven, but in so doing also to live a life uh, that is great on the, uh, according to the Bible on a daily basis. So let me encourage you. Uh, get your Bible, get something that will help you to uh, understand it. Uh, and as a result of that, we want to encourage you uh, to do the will of Christ. Now, as you and I, before we begin, let me remind you of our uh, website, the Lithia Springs Church of Christ.com. Now, let me encourage you to go to that website uh, because on that website, there are a lot of things that will help you come to a better understanding of the will of God. For an example, uh, you can, there's a section there, you can click on that, uh, and it is the World Video Bible School. You click on that section, there are approximately 350 DVDs that you can view on that particular website. Oh, whoa, what a great opportunity to study the Bible. Now, in addition to that, we have the DVD Searching for Truth on our website. You can study that, or What Must I Do to Be Saved? Or uh, you can also look at the uh, DVD entitled, Why Are There So Many Churches? So the object is that you can go to our website, LithiaSpringsChurchOfChrist.com, and in looking at our website, you will be able to come to a better understanding of the will of God. We want you to go to heaven. We want you to know the Bible. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is our goal, our prayer, and our desire. Now, in doing so, we would encourage you to sign up for our free Bible correspondence course. There is a section on that website, and all you do, just give us your name, address. Uh, please include the zip code. We will send you lesson number one in the free Bible correspondence course. And then, after you complete lesson number one, send it back to us. We will grade it. Send you lesson number two, along with a nice certificate of completion. You will be able to get all ten of those lessons. Nice certificate as a result of all ten of them. So let me encourage you. Go sign up, give us your name, address, include the zip code. We'll send you lesson number one in the free Bible correspondence course. Now, also let me remind you that if you're not available to attend the services of the Church of Christ in your community uh, on the Lord's Day, there's a section on our website that says streaming. Just click on that. You can be a part of our worship assembly on Sunday morning and on Sunday evening as well. Now, I want you to think about a passage of Scripture that's found in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 30 uh, and verse number 19. Now, what you find in that verse, and that is Moses, he has come down to the end of his life. He has led the children of Israel. He has went into Egypt. He brought them out of Egyptian bondage. And as he brought them out, took them across the Red Sea on dry ground, uh, received the law from uh, God on Mount Sinai. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, and now they are ready to cross the river Jordan and to go into the land that God has promised them. 
And Moses writes five books of the Old Testament. It's called the Pentateuch. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter number 30 and verse number 19, you find that Moses presents something to them. He said, I, and I, I'm just going to paraphrase. You can see the verse on the screen, but I'm just going to paraphrase a section of it in which he pointed out, he said, I place before you life and death. Uh, you've got a choice. You, you've got a choice in how you live. Now, I want you now to look uh, at this particular passage of Scripture, or look at the points that we understand here, because he said, now you choose life. Here is an option that you have. If you and I were to go back to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 28, one of the things that we're going to find out in Deuteronomy 28, uh, in that entire chapter, now he divides chapter number 28 of Deuteronomy, is divided up into two sections. In one of those sections, he says, now, if you serve God, if you do the will of God, he says, God is going to bless you. Now, my friend, listen, you and I understand the same thing today. In the book of Romans, chapter number 8 and verse number 28, the Bible said, we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to His purpose. And so when you and I look at this and we come to this understanding uh, and we understand again that we know that all things work together for good if we do the will of God. That's what Moses is saying in Deuteronomy chapter number 28. He said, if you do the will of God and you follow in the footsteps of God and you do His will, He's going to bless you. But he said, if you do not, if you do not follow His will, He is not going to bless you. You know, he kind of illustrates it. Uh, he says, now the sky is not going to bring forth the rain and the ground is not going to bring forth its fruit. So let me encourage you, let me challenge you to read Deuteronomy chapter number 28, and as you do that, uh, then you can come to a better understanding of what Moses is saying. Now, as you and I look at this, and he says to them, I want you to make this choice. And so Deuteronomy chapter number 30 and verse number 19, we're looking at death and life. Now, I want you to observe something. When you look at that, and he said, I place these before you, you and I need to understand from Hebrews 9 and verse number 27 that it is appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. In Romans chapter number 5 and verse number 12, the Bible says, Wherefore by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. Therefore death is passed upon all men for all have sinned. Now again, look at what he is saying. He is saying, Wherefore by one man sin entered the world and death by sin. Man, in the book of Genesis chapter number 3, you remember that on that occasion, you'll find that God said to Adam and Eve that if you eat of this fruit, you're going to die. Thou shalt surely die. The devil comes in, he said, oh no, no, no. No, you're not going to die. You know, God, you're not, you just go ahead and eat. And they did. And so when you come to Romans 5 and verse number 12, and the Bible says, Wherefore by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Therefore death is passed upon all men. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you and I need to understand that death is passed upon all men. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. You'll find that David said in the Old Testament, when David, for an example, when he was fleeing from Saul and was talking to Jonathan, he made this statement. He said, there is but a step between me and death. You and I have no guarantee, my friend, that we're going to live tomorrow. You and I have no guarantee that we're going to live another week, another year, another day, another hour, another minute. We have no guarantee that's going to take place. I have used illustrations many times uh, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, for an example. Uh, they were having a lectureship program. And the person who was introduced, the person introduced the next speaker. The next speaker was sitting on the stage at, uh, uh, in a chair or a, a small pew on a stage. And the speaker introduced, uh, the, the person introduced the one who was to speak. And when he turned around, that individual had fallen over dead. He didn't plan on that. You see, you and I have this idea, well, I'm, I'm going to live forever. David said there is but a step between me and death. You and I need to understand that. I, I've, I remember here probably uh, a year or so ago, 
uh, there was a preacher and he was preaching and finally he decided to, to, that maybe wasn't feeling well and he stepped down and began, uh, began to give the plan of salvation. He sat down on the front pew and deceased. Now, I'm trying to help you and I understand. When you and I look at death and we look at life, now look at what Job said. Job said, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. What is he saying? He's saying that life is brief. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. Here's another one. Here's kind of like, here's how David described it. David said that, that it's, life is like water. You pour it out on the ground and it's hard to pick it up. You're, you're not going to get it back again. My friend, you and I have today. Now, go with me to the book of James chapter number 4. In the book of James chapter number 4, the Bible says, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, that we'll go into such a city, continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. He said, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. Oh, he had planned the place. He had planned the profit. He had planned the product. He had had everything planned up. We'll go into such a city, continue there a year. That was the period of time. Continue there a year. We'll buy and sell and get gain. And James said, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. Why? Because your life is a vapor that appears for a little time, and then it vanisheth away. What are you saying? What are you saying, James? Your life. What is It's a vapor. Oh, in the book of Psalm, chapter number 90. The psalmist said, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. And when you and I look at this and we see that we dwell, I like that word dwell in uh, Psalm 90 and verse 1, also used in 91 and also in uh, the fourth chapter and verse 8 of, some, uh, of the Psalms as well. And he used that word dwell and basically what he's saying that when we put our trust in God and we sit, we stay, we stand, and he said, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place. Now he goes on down and he says this. He said, our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years. Now, seventy or eighty. Now, we know that there are individuals who live longer than that, and there are those who live less than that. So when you and I reckon, you know, several years ago, the lifespan of man was like 47.5, and now I think it's like 69.7, something to that effect. I just want you and I to come to an understanding that when we look at death, death has been passed upon all men. And we need to understand that life is brief. Life, oh, even at 80 years, it is short. Now, as you and I think about this, you and I need to come to another understanding, and that is this. How does God view death for the Christian? Now, you look at several passages of Scripture, Hebrews 9 and verse number 27, the point unto man, once die and after this the judgment. Uh, or you look, you, you study the Bible and you come to this conclusion that uh, life is brief, but in John 5, 28 and 29, the Bible says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming which all that are in the graves shall hear his fo uh, voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now I want you to see number one in this section. Look at this. You and I need to see God's view of death for the Christian. When an individual becomes a child of God, obeys the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you become a child of God, then, my friend, you and I recognize that our past sins are washed away. When you and I look at the plan of salvation, for an example, when we come to an understanding, Romans 10 and verse number 17, the Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, that without faith it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. You and I look at this, folks, and we come to this understanding, and that is simply this. You and I recognize the fact that in diligently seeking after Him, we understand a point that a man wants to die, we dil diligently seek after Him. You and I understand that that faith in Hebrews 11 verse 6 is essential. Now let me just quickly review this. 
And that is, we must have faith, and that comes by hearing the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. Secondly, not only must we have that faith, but we must change our life by repentance. Luke 13, 3 and 5, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And then upon that repentance, we confess Christ before men. The Bible says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Whosoever therefore shall deny me before men, him will I deny also before my Father which is in heaven. We see the essentiality of confession confessing the name of Jesus Christ. Romans 10 verses 9 and 10. The Bible says, With the heart man believe the righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We make a confession. We have an example of that in Acts chapter number 8. When Philip had studied with the eunuch, and the Bible says they went on their way, they came to a certain water. He said, See, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, If thou believest, thou mayest. He said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What do? He made a confession. We hear the Word of God. We believe the Word of God. We change our life by repentance. We confess Christ before men. And then we're baptized into Christ for the remission of our sin. Acts 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Do what? Be baptized. Why? For the remission of sin. Now, you become a Christian. You're a child of God. Death to the Christian. How does God view that? You see, when, when an individual dies, your family member dies. Something happens. Maybe, maybe someone has been ill. Maybe they've lived a long life and, and, and they die. They, they decease. And you're sad. We're, I mean, naturally you are. Why? Because we love these individuals. We love the association that we have, uh, husbands and wives. I read recently where a husband and wife uh, they had been married for something, uh, not hardly, I think almost 60 years. All day they were holding hands. She deceased. And just in a matter of a short time, I'm, I'm talking about an hour or two, he deceased as well. Now, you and I look at that. And we understand, and so when we look, we look at the sadness. Well, a, a husband gives up a wife, or a wife gives up a husband, or parents give up a child, or a child gives up parents. We understand the effect that death has on a family. We're sad. We cry. We celebrate the life. We miss that individual. But my friend, listen to this. There are four things, four things very quickly, that you and I, God looks at the death of a Christian differently. For an example, God looks at the death of a Christian as being precious. For an example, in the book of Psalm, chapter number 16, one, excuse me, 116 verse 15, the Bible said in Psalm 116, 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. See, God looks at it as being a precious thing. Why? Because that child of God, that individual who has given his life in service to the kingdom of God, that individual who has submitted his will to the will of God, that individual who has been saved by the blood of the Lamb, that individual is now welcomed home. You remember what we read earlier in Matthew chapter 10? The Bible said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. You think about this. You think about being introduced to God by the Son. <laughs> Have you ever been introduced to someone important? You know, I, there's no way I'm going to get into the White House, period. I mean, it doesn't matter who's president and who's not president. Not they're not going to let me in there, folks. I don't, know any, I don't know enough folks in order to get in. I don't know, I don't know any important people except I know God. I know Christ. And the Bible tells me that whosoever shall confess me before men, I will confess before my Father. And so in Psalm 116 verse 15, and the Bible says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. You see, because this old body decays upon this earth, and then the body and the spirit separate, and the Bible says the spirit goes back to God who gave it, and the body back to the dust of the ground. Let me give you the second thing. Not only does God view the death of the Christian as being precious, but it's also blessed. Listen to what he says. In Revelation 14, verse 13, the Bible says, Blessed are the dead 
that die in the Lord. Yea, saith the Spirit, they shall rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. My friend, I don't know about you, but I think that's one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible. Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. As I have performed many funerals, as you and I maybe gather at a, a service at the funeral home uh, and, and as we view the remains of someone whom we love and, and we're going to miss, the Bible says, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. What are they doing? They rest from their life and their works, their influence continues to follow them. Let me give you another passage of Scripture. And that is found in the book of Philippians, chapter number 1. If you go to verse number uh, 21, in that era, 21, 22, Philippians chapter 1, I want you to hear what Paul said. Paul said, for me to die is gain. My friend, listen to this. You and I, we're going to hang on to life as long as we can. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. There's not, there's, I'm going to tell you something, folks. There's not enough Botox that you and I can live forever. It's not going to happen. So listen to what Paul said. Paul said, for me to die is gain. Now, why is it going to be gain? Well, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, and, or verse number 1, the Bible said, for we know that if the earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, that we have a home eternal in the heavens built by the hand of God. Now, paraphrase that. And so when Paul said, for me to, he said, now, for me to stay here, for me to be on this earth, for me to be teaching and preaching and writing as he was doing, he said, that's going to be for your benefit. He said, for, it would be better for me if I could just go on and be with the Lord. But he said, for me to die is gain. Now you think about that gain. My friend, you think about it. You think about what you're going to get. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You know, you and I, I do, now maybe you do, but I, I just kind of doubt it. I do not live in a mansion. I, not at all, folks. Now, I have a comfortable place in which to live. Uh, I have a nice bed on which to sleep. I get plenty to eat. Uh, life is great and it's wonderful. But you know what the Bible says? I'm going, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. There's gain. Now, let me give you the fourth thing. Number one, remember, is precious. Number two is blessed. Number three is gain. Number four is victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 58. The Bible says, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Now when you and I look at this, and we come to this understanding, we come to this conclusion, my friend, that we are victorious over death and the grave. The Bible says there's going to be a resurrection in a moment, in the twinkling of the light of an eye, when the last trump shall sound. We'll be resurrected, folks. So now, to God. See, when God sees the death of a saint, the Bible says it's precious, blessed, it's gain, and it's victorious. Now, I want to turn that around. Because in, we've already, of course, read John 5, 20, 29. But in Matthew chapter 25, in verse number 46, the Bible says, And these shall go away into everlasting destruction. What are you talking about? Well, in Matthew chapter number 25, verse 31, the Bible says, When the Son of Man shall come in all of His glory, and all of His holy angels with Him, then shall He sit on the throne of His glory, and there shall be gathered together all nations. He'll separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. He'll place the sheep on the right hand, and the goats on the left hand. He will turn to those on the right hand, and he'll say unto them, Enter in, thou blessed, to the place prepared for thee from the foundation of the world. I was hungry, you fed me. Thirsty, you gave me drink. Sick, you visited me. In prison, you came to me. Naked, and you clothed me. Well, when did we see you like this, Lord? Well, in as much as you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. But he turns to those on the left hand. These are goats. He places the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left hand. And he turns to those on the left hand and he says to them, Depart from me. They shall go away into everlasting punishment. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 6 and verse number 23, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so when you and I, how does God view the death of the right? We've already looked at the four things. 
How does God view the death of the wicked? In Romans 1 verse 18, the Bible says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. My friend, listen. You and I need to do the will of God. We need to search the Scriptures. We need to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because when you and I look, how does God... Be, the Bible says that these shall go away into everlasting punishment. The Bible says there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Bible says the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. They have no rest day and night. Now where are you? Which one of these groups are you in? Are you a Christian? Have you obeyed the gospel of Christ? Have you been baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins? Now, I want, I want to go to the last section of this lesson, and I want to use two passages of Scripture. When you and I look at the psalm, in Psalm chapter number 27, and also Psalm chapter number 40, so we're going to look at this. Because as we recognize in these two chapters... In the book of Psalm, chapter number 27, the Bible says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. In the book of Psalm, chapter number 46, the Bible says, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the earth shake with the swelling thereof. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. Now I want you to see this. We have looked at death and life. A point of man wants to die if this is the judgment. Life's a vapor. We have looked at God's view of those who die in the Lord. We have also looked at God's view of those individuals who die outside of the Lord. And now we need to recognize that we have the opportunity. That's why the psalmist said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies, he said, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. He said, Though a host should encamp against me. And then God is our refuge. That you and I can find strength. The Bible says, trust in the Lord, Proverbs chapter number 3. Do not trust in your own understanding, but you and I trust in the Lord. I want to challenge you today. If you're not a Christian, you have not obeyed the gospel. And we've already went through the plan of salvation to hear the will of God, to believe in Hebrews eleven six, 6, to change your life by repentance, confess His name before men, and be baptized for the remission of sin. That's what I want to challenge you to do. We thank you very much for watching the Fountain of Life program today, and we encourage you to watch it the next time it is on. It's the